as you know, hurricanes do a lot more than just inconvenience people. They can level buildings and kill animals and people too. Would you like to know more about their history? Today, I'll be sharing a book that will tell you all about it. Hi, I'm Library Lynn, and I make knowing great nonfiction books my mission. Don't know what to read next? I always have ideas. Just so you know, I do tend to be a backlist reader with an occasional newish book thrown in. Today we're going to talk about A Furious Sky, The 500-Year History of America's Hurricanes by Eric J. Dolan. We'll cover the three main things I got from the book and I'll share what I liked least and what I liked most about it. And stay tuned to the end for the number one life lesson I got from the book. Eric J. Dolan writes American history books of all sorts. You may be familiar with Black Flags, Blue Waters, The Epic History of America's Most Notorious Pirates, or Leviathan, The History of Whaling in America. His books are incredibly well-researched and understandably have received many awards and distinction on best books lists. He graduated from Brown University and Yale and received his PhD in Environmental Policy from the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. I found him to be a personable and accessible author with a wide range of interests. The three main points I got from the book. Number one, hurricanes are nothing new. When the Spanish and other early European settlers arrived in the Americas, they were unprepared for the monster storms that would periodically sweep, sweep across the Atlantic from Africa. Europe sometimes had the remnants of these hurricanes land on their shores, but they were much weaker after they had contacted the Caribbean and the North American continent, and then crossed back across the North Atlantic Ocean. Dolan tells stories of how the hurricanes were encountered by Christopher Columbus and his contemporaries, which sunk many ships, taking with them treasures and lives. These hurricanes have continued, of course, because that's what they do. And then they didn't start with the arrival of the Europeans, of course. He begins the story here because that's where the most detailed records begin. And he makes it plain that they shaped the history of the United States in ways I never suspected. Point number two, hurricanes were more deadly in our pre-satellite days because people were unprepared. Dolan discusses how scientists fought over what caused these storms and how they operated in the early days of our nation. He gives examples of Benjamin Franklin's observation of one hurricane that hit both Philadelphia and Boston in the same evenings with winds coming from completely separate directions. Naturally, this was confusing for our nation's scientific community. Later on in the 19th century, early meteorologists battled to understand hurricanes so they could be forecasted more, with more accuracy. He gives lots of examples of how their failures resulted in many, many lost lives. One example is the hurricane of 1900 that temporarily wiped the city of Galveston, Texas off the map. In discussing this, he tells of Isaac Klein, who was an employee of the U.S. Weather Bureau stationed in Galveston, Texas. Klein didn't believe that a large storm surge was even possible in Galveston. He explained why in an article he had written nine years before the deadly hurricane hit. Unfortunately, he was woefully mistaken, and Dolan explains why. They didn't understand enough about the physics to make accurate predictions back then. In the passage that I'm getting ready to read, he explains that Isaac and his brother warned the city that the hurricane was on the way, but he was unprepared for what was coming. He explains all these factors that he's talking about here in great detail above. Because of all these factors, Galveston was confronting a storm surge of biblical proportions. And beyond the surge was the roaring wind. Already, some residents of the city had died, and many more would be added to their ranks. In sharing his observations of the disaster, a few days later, local reporter Richard Spillane said, the people of Galveston were like rats in traps. To leave a house or any building was to drown. To remain was to court death in the wreckage. In this later passage, he talks about how Isaac's house was swept away and it was considered one of the safer ones on the island, and while he and his brother desperately tried to save some of Isaac's children. For three hours, they drifted having no idea where they were or if the end was near. A few times, one or both of the brothers were knocked off the raft, only to fight their way back and resume their protective positions. Two more people joined them on their terrible journey, a four-year-old girl who they plucked from some wreckage and a woman who climbed aboard. 
While being carried forward by the winds and the surging waters, Isaac would later recall, through the darkness and the terrific downpour of rain, we could hear houses crashing under the impact of the wreckage hurled forward by the winds and storm tide but this did not blot out the screams of the injured and dying. He follows this story with lesser known hurricanes, but also well-known ones, like the one that hit the Florida Keys in 1935, where World War I veterans were working in camps and waited for a train that tragically arrived too late to take them to safety. He later describes how we came to understand these storms better and how we came to rate them the way we do. These stories of the scientific discoveries were interesting on their own and often involved a lot of adventure. The third thing I learned from the book, taking chances on survival through one of these storms is perilous even today, and you don't need to live near a coast to be severely impacted. He tells one story how in 1969, Hurricane Camille went through Louisiana and Mississippi, north into Tennessee and Kentucky. Then it swung east, heading for Virginia. But instead of heading over the mountains and back out to sea, as would be expected, it hit a cold front and stalled over Nelson County in Virginia. Over 120 people were swept away in the ensuing winds and floods. And he does walk you through devastating personal accounts of the survivors. He also gives examples of where Category 1 storms have created deadly conditions. And he ends with Hurricanes Harvey, Irma, and Maria in 2017. I've been convinced by this book that I never want to take a chance on writing one of these storms out if I can help it. What I like least about the book, the abundance of scientific facts. He discusses atmospheric conditions, the temperatures, nearby landforms, and the physics involved in storm surges and things like that. And I unfortunately don't have the background to understand these things, but maybe you do. In that case, this might actually be the part of the book you like best. It was very informative. What I liked best about the book, well, I like the stories he tells. He told one about Katherine Hepburn who went swimming one September with a friend near her parents' summer home in Connecticut. Um, as they took their final swim of the day, the waves and the wind were whipping up. As she and her companion made it back to their home, they decided to leave the home in the company of her mother, her brother, other guests and workers who were um, working on their house. They went uphill to an end that was closed for the fall. They broke into it to find shelter. And from there, they watched the storm sweep their home away. There were lots of stories like this. The final lesson I got from the book, don't take chances with hurricanes. Dolan points out that every hurricane season, whether it's mild, average, or overactive, it brings a chance of devastating storms that can destroy lives and property in the U.S. Don't get lulled into thinking it's going to be a small one. And he discusses the impacts climate change will likely have, increasing the frequency and severity of them. He tells what can be done to lessen the impact, like strengthening building codes, but a big part of what we can do is educate ourselves and prepare ourselves and our families to deal more effectively with these events. And after reading the copious stories of the horror these storms can bring, I'd say anyone who lives east of the Mississippi or anywhere within miles of the Gulf Coast should take his advice to heart. Never take these storms lightly. Other books by Eric J. Dolan. I mentioned two at the beginning. He's written quite a few books. These are just three more. Rebels at Sea, Privateering in the American Revolution. Brilliant Beacons, A History of the American Lighthouse. And When America First Met China, An Exotic History of Tea, Drugs, and Money in the Age of Sail. So that's my review of A Furious Sky. Have you ever lived through a hurricane and have a story you'd like to share? Do you have a book about natural disasters that you'd like to recommend? Or do you have another book by Eric J. Dolan that you've enjoyed? If so, leave a comment below. For more worthwhile nonfiction books to read, hit like and subscribe so you'll always have fresh ideas. And if you would like great books like this at your fingertips, check out my book, Library Lens Curated Collection of Superlative Nonfiction. Here you'll find an entire library's worth of excellent, outstanding, recommended books on every topic arranged in Dewey Decimal Classification, just like in a public library. You'll find links to all of Eric J. Dolan's books mentioned in this video and my book in the description box below. If you use my link, I'll get a small commission from your purchase, which I would appreciate. And finally, share this video with your book-loving family and friends. Until next time, happy reading! Thank you.